Hello, my name is Maria Omar. I'm representing the Liberal Party today. And our platform uh, on the energy includes both ways of how we can deal with the energy crisis. First, we're planning to finish the Trans Mountain Path pipeline and restart Energy East pipeline. Next, right simultaneously, we diversify the economy and we invest in the renewable energy sector. So other priorities is the green initiatives, uh, like uh, renewable energy representing an uh, economic opportunity for Alberta. And what we decided to do to pay more attention to congregation plans, because this is actually one of the biggest issues that are coming up in Europe and around the world. First, we produce the energy, and then the second part, we need to store it. That's why we're going to provide the subsidies and for the, pro for the programs that are going to do research on the congregation plans and the ways of how we can store the uh, power and convert it into energy in nature. So that would be the priority. The second part of it is to have a workforce, to have a workforce of students that are actually able to uh, contribute into employment. So we're going to have employment uh, grants to retrain current workforce and we're going to increase number of STEM graduates in universities and provide that training to the youth. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be changing uh, the, stru uh, the, st uh, the structure for the uh, training for the curriculum because University of Alberta look at the curriculum there is a, actually a lot of loopholes uh, in education regarding the energy storage so we're going to be dealing with this as well to make sure our youth is trained and they're ready to go and they're ready to uh, invest in, in the sector also we're going to lower the taxes because this is the one important thing for corporations uh, in order to make our market more open in order, in order to bring the investment and corporate taxes will be lowered by 2% also have a tax breaks for the startups and young companies who's going to be bringing uh, new projects to the market. Thank you. Okay. Right, my name is David Usko, I'm the Alberta Advantage Party. As far as renewable energy is concerned, it has a place within our society. I think it's got a long ways to go yet as far as development is concerned. Uh, the biggest problem being storage of that power. Power is absolutely worthless to you if you cannot store it, use it whenever you need it. The Alberta Advantage Party believes very strongly in investment in the technology in order to do the research necessary to make sure that we can have the storage capacity. Without the storage capacity, quite literally, it's very limited in its use for some communities. It may be the only power source that they have. In that case, yes, it tends to be utilized to the best it can be at the time. But to use it completely to change society of only renewable energies at the present time, I don't think the technology is quite there. I do think that it has a place. I do think that it is going to be something that is going to expand as time goes on. But the technology has to have the investment from government in order to do it. We do not believe in subsidies to win or solar power industry as subsidies, but we do definitely believe in investment in the technological research to make sure that it continues to go forward. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Graham Powell, Dr. Graham Powell, and uh, I work like uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Graham Paul, I'm Dr. Graham Paul, I worked like uh, 26 plus years in uh, petroleum industry, I'm a research scientist. And who can better understand uh, the clean energy and renewable uh, uh, thing than, than myself? Uh, I'm not a politician, so I just stepped into this in this world, uh, just to contribute a little bit of my expertise and the messages that I will be bringing. And my party, I strongly uh, support uh, the renewable incentives. My party leader, Mr. Nadal, has announced 100, uh, creating uh, some capital power, creating $100 million fund dedicated to the renewable energy and the, uh, the clean energy. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, 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 I am fully agree with David. Uh, storage is, 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 the, is the problem, and uh, solar energy, particularly, that has uh, a, a, a very good uh, scope in this country. Uh, in, the, in this province as well, and we, we have uh, like uh, many bright days, and uh, and uh, I would say uh, we we are very much committed and strongly support Thank you. I am Chris Valley with the Green Party of Alberta. 
I'd like to recognize everyone on Treaty 6 territory, first off. Um, and uh, my platform, uh, is, uh, well, first I'd like to thank the Solar Society for including us, because uh, the Green Party has not been included in a lot of uh, forums. Uh, um, and so uh, one of the things I'd like to say is the Green Party has supported renewable energy since the 1990s, long before it was popular. We applaud the NDP for the work that they've done. Um, however, we are still only at about 10% 10, 10 renewable energy, and of that, a very small percentage of that is, uh, is solar. The IPPC tells us that we have 12 years to completely uh, change our energy infrastructure. Uh, in order to meet this challenge, we need bold action. Uh, so as a result, uh, we, we do uh, support a uh, carbon tax, but a carbon tax that is more focused on uh, heavy emitters and one that is revenue neutral and does not go into the general funding. Um, we would like to uh, bring in a feed-in tariff and to set the value of solar. And with that, we would also like to remove the cap on the amount of energy that people can produce and allow those people to actually get paid for the energy that they're uh, producing. Uh, and we would also like to bring in a comprehensive PACE program which would allow for all Albertans to have access to uh, renewable energy as well as energy efficient upgrades um, and institute a full-scale renewable energy community uh, program so that that way, uh, with, with that includes virtual media. Uh, so we would like to develop uh, wind, solar, geothermal, uh, energy storage, as well as cogen facilities, uh, and we provide educated, age, education and training uh, for those looking to take part in this transition. In short, we will get Albertans back to work while meeting the challenge of climate change. Chris, and also provide our sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> too much to say. <laughs> Good morning, and. Uh, Good morning and thank you for having me as part of this very important discussion and thanks to CISA as well for all the work. Uh, my name is Janice Irwin and I'm the NDP candidate for Edmonton Highlands Norwood and I want to also acknowledge that we are gathered here on Treaty 6 territory and I'd like to also acknowledge the Métis people of Alberta who share a deep connection with this land. So after years of inaction and climate change denial, the, the Alberta NDP knows that our energy future depends on taking climate change seriously and that includes taking advantage of Alberta's vast renewable energy sources. You probably all know that prior to the last election, Alberta was the only jurisdiction in North America without an agency to help its citizens save energy. And as part of our climate leadership plan, we created Energy Efficiency Alberta to help families, businesses, and communities across Alberta reduce both their energy costs and their greenhouse gas emissions. And as part of that, we've seen enormous success uh, with our residential and our commercial solar programs. And the numbers tell the story. The one number that I'm just so proud of is the fact that Alberta's solar capacity has increased from 6 megawatts in 2015 to 50 megawatts in 2018. That's an 800% increase, and that's something to be darn proud of. About 3,100 solar installations have been completed across the province. Uh, more than 36,000 tons of greenhouse gases uh, have, been, have been avoided each year, which is equivalent to removing 7,000 cars from our roads every year. And we've been able, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but we've been able to introduce an on-farm solar program, indigenous solar program, municipal uh, solar programs, and as a former teacher myself, I'm very proud of our school solar programs. And we know, as Graham alluded to, uh, unfortunately the UCP isn't here, but they've already said that they plan to scrap the climate leadership plan, which includes all of these programs, and we just can't let that happen. So, as solar costs continue to drop, it's safe to say that with the re-elected NDP government, uh, the opportunities for solar in Alberta will continue to grow, and I'm pretty excited about the bright future. I'm going to try to avoid puns today. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, and I look forward to taking all of your questions. Hi, I'm Andrew Panuski of the Communist Party of Alberta. Thank you for having me here. First, I would like to start by saying that climate change is a fact, and it's coming very soon. We've got less than a decade to deal with it before we have serious consequences worldwide. Uh, the first thing that needs to be done is to transition, start the transition immediately to a fully renewable energy economy. We need to nationalize the oil sector 
and uh, stop expansion in the oil sands, stop all pipelines. We need to move toward massive funding for solar projects, wind projects, and geothermal energy. Alberta is a great spot for geothermal energy. We know that it is possible to run an economy entirely on renewable energy. We saw that Germany was able to run off of renewable energy for more than 72 hours without any problems. Uh, they were able to create more energy than they needed and they could uh, export that energy to the rest of the EU. I know as a youth that this is an extremely important thing. I have been to a rally, multiple rallies in Edmonton where we see student walkouts, where we see students leave school in order to push for uh, dealing with climate change. This is extremely important to my generation because we're the ones that have to do it. Thank you. Okay, as far as uh, supporting the current programs on solar energy, the subsidization of solar power, uh, we do not believe in the subsidization of the industry. We feel that if an industry wishes to uh, perform, go ahead and perform, but you have to be able to stand on your own. I don't think the solar industry at this present time can do that. We do believe very strongly in supporting research, especially into the storage capacity of solar energy, wind energy. If it's going to become completely 100 percent viable industry, it has to be able to be there on demand at any time that it is needed. And in order to accomplish that we need the storage capacity and we feel very strongly that that's where a government investment can be in instead. Thank you. Pass to your left. Uh, like I said, I'm very new to the politics and uh, the world and uh, uh, I have something that was provided uh, by my party and uh, our MLA supported uh, property uh, uh, says clean energy pro uh, legislature last, last year for the solar, uh, uh, for the solar program. Uh, but uh, that uh, says the government said no, I'm sorry, please. And uh, we, we uh, uh, our MLA just spoke in favor of uh, Bill 10, uh, that was an ad hoc and about clean energy program uh, improvements. Uh, we will propose an amendment to make a retroactive solar uh, capacity that was installed prior to Bill 10. And yeah, uh, the Alberta Party strongly, strongly believe in, uh, uh, in supporting the clean energy and uh, incentives of this province. Thank you. I'm going to do, uh, Chris, give me the, the microphone back oh. and give it to Maria. Can you hold up your court for now? You have and then you can take that microphone. So you have the three sure. people with one microphone and three of you from the microphone. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, there's no surprise that the Green Party uh, is in support of renewable energy. Uh, I myself am a solar installer, um, and uh, the, the, uh, the main difference is, is that I think the Phoenix tariff has more staying power than the rebates. So, we, as a solar installer, we kind of suffered, we can call waiting for the rebates, it was about a year and a half where we had to wait for that to be implemented, and that kind of really, if you tried to be um, out of business for about a year and a half, Reduce business, it's, it's pretty tough. But uh, so I think that the feed-in tariff would actually end up set the value of the solar, and as well as we would move to uh, basically uh, reduce the service fees because uh, those are a huge disincentive to uh, renewable energy. Um, and so uh, you know, and then of course you know if, if there's money uh, for renewable energy supports, uh, and then like with the carbon tax, then that can be reinvested. And education and, uh, and uh, more research. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just have, as I talked about earlier, I'm so proud of uh, our, our climate leadership plan, which of course the C energy efficiency programs. And I talked a little bit about the fact that we've had so much growth in the commercial and residential solar programs. The two rounds of the municipal solar program with, with incredible projects, the on-farm solar program, um, 
some of the uh, projects that have uh, taken place on some of the First Nations in Alberta, the Indigenous Solar Program, there's a great example in Muscogee, which I can talk a little bit more about later, and as I said, the school programs as well. And so, you know, when we hear the UCP wants to cancel the Climate Leadership Plan, just think about how aggressive uh, that, that will be for, I mean, all the progress we've made. Uh, you know, that's going to blow a $1.2 billion hole in our budget, and there's no plan to pay for that. So, by pricing carbon, we've made it so that solar can now compete on a level playing field. And like I said, I'm so proud of the progress we've made. Certainly, there's more to be done, uh, but we're on the right track under, under the NDP and Rachel Motley's leadership. In terms of support for subsidies for renewable energy, uh, absolutely we support uh, the program that the NDP has put in place, but they don't reach anywhere near far enough. We need to put a lot more money into this. We need to put a lot more money into creating new programs like a tax credit for businesses so that businesses that pursue renewable energy uh, have an incentive to move in that direction. Uh, it's important also that we put direct money into investing in government-owned corporations that will uh, be building a renewable energy economy. Subsidies are not enough. We need to have uh, the government lead the way in this situation. So uh, our platform is a pretty diversifying economy, and we know that actually solar energy is growing by 20% higher in uh, uh, group, like growth, uh, growth rates than any other energy sectors. So that's why we invested in it the most. Things that are uh, problematic at this point is actually manufacturing extra things that we need to build, solar panels, like for example inverters, transformers, com uh, combiners, measuring systems. And what we need to do is subsidize those programs in order to lower the cost of general production in Alberta. We also need to give a tax breaks for the all startups companies for the first three years. So when they function, even if they make revenues, we're not going to be taxing them for the first three years in order to give that period for growth and development of technology. Also, from the reports that we know, it is about 8,800 jobs will be needed by 2030 in energy, in solar energy sector. So we're trying, what we're trying to do with this, we increase it by 25% the number of spaces in our universities in STEM uh, specialties, and we also provide a grant to give uh, jobs to 32 uh, workers to train them for the upcoming industry. Thank you. Thank you. So now, next question, please start with friend. What is your party's plan to support workers and further develop education and training within the renewable energy industry? Thank you. Uh, my party is uh, very much committed uh, for training uh, the individuals and especially the students uh, for the industry. We fully support educating our young people for the industry for the course. We will add 45,000 PSC, Mr. Mandel has announced that. We will add 45,000 PSC seats, including seats in the rural and remote Alberta to help diversify their local economies into renewable, including solar, wind, and fuel thermal, etc. We fully support, strongly support training that that's needed and provided by the industry, including by the solar industry. Thank you. Thank you. You're talking about Chris. Um, because you have a microphone. Uh -huh. Sorry, Grant. Just share here. Yeah. Um, hold it close because there's a noise coming from. You're actually competing against the audience. Sure, sure. not here. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, basically, with the Green Party, we believe that as much uh, resources that we need to put into education and training, and as well as research, uh, has to be done. We've seen uh, vital technologies. The, I myself have worked for companies that are generating battery technology in Alberta, um, as well as uh, fuel cell uh, technology in Alberta. We also have a, a, a scientist who's working on quantum dot. All of those technologies have left Alberta. There were opportunities lost this past governments did not see them as a value. And so the thing of it is, is yes, energy storage, uh, and, and if we could be the forefront in creating quantum dot uh, solar panels, then, then we should be doing that. We should be leading the world. Thank you, Jim. Look, uh, you know, we turned Alberta into the single largest market for renewable energy investment in Canada. And so it's crucial for industry to have the talent, the expertise, 
that it needs to ramp up the production that has happened over the last four years and continue going forward. We know now that solar is very competitive and no one believed that until we procured the lowest cost solar ever seen in Canada, 4.9 cents per kilowatt hour. That's a game changer and it will clearly be our future here in Alberta. And only a regressive government that would fight against renewable energy, such as the comments we've seen repeatedly from the UCP, could stand in the way. So we need to make sure that we've got the technical capacity, the expertise, so that installers uh, can get the, their installations done uh, when we advance the industry through programming. And that's exactly what we see at places here like Nate, who are leaders in, in solar energy through their alternative and uh, renewable energy program. But we also need to make sure that those young people coming out of these institutions are able to look forward to a future in renewable energy and have a job when they graduate. And so together I know that we can continue to successfully build a competitive industry in the province that's going to bring low cost renewable energy uh, for Albertans uh, for the long term. Thank you. The first thing that we should do in order to uh, build training opportunities for workers in Alberta is to bring in experts from overseas. We don't have the experience here in this province the way that countries like Germany and Portugal and other countries overseas uh, do with renewable energy. So we would pay to have experts from overseas come and train our workers. We would also uh, build a program to retrain workers from the oil sector. We would subsidize uh, these workers if they make the decision to pursue retraining in renewable energy. The third thing that we would do in order to pursue uh, training in renewable energy and make it easier to have uh, a new experienced workforce is free education. Uh, nobody would have to pay for any sort of education under a communist government, so uh, that would lead to anybody who wanted to become a worker in the renewable energy sector being able to pursue the training that they want with no financial aid. Thank you. Marie. Again, hold the microphone close. A lot of noise coming from the Alberta Liberal Party is offering 80 million dollars grants annually under the program Back to Work, where which like which can allow people to get retrained into their post secondaries and upgrade their current uh, qualifications in order to work in other sectors. So they don't have to be stuck in the one work that been, uh, been that they were been stuck in before. Also, what we're going to be doing is uh, making sure that every curriculum in uh, Alberta includes uh, PV uh, uh, information and the storage in, uh, in there, whether it's going to be technicians, whether it's going to be physicists, mathematicians, uh, engineers who's going to be graduating within the next five years. We're also going to be increasing opportunities for high school students because it's very important to foster that interest really early and for me as a uh, educator and basis of our Alberta Liberal Education Platform, I see it's very important that we interest in our youth since high school and we introduce the STEM curriculum very early and outreach programs and trades as well. Well, the Alberta Advantage Party has been looking very closely at uh, the energy uh, sector for an awful long time. One of the countries in the world that is one of the most technologically advanced on the planet is Germany. Germany, over a 25 year span, invested $1.1 trillion into wind and solar energy. About a year, just a little over a year ago, they pulled all of their subsidies out of the program completely and have now reinvested into building two brand new state-of-the-art coal-fired power plants. I listened very closely to what their energy minister had to say in pulling out those subsidies. He said the simple situation is, until such time as we can have storage capacity so that the energy is there all the time when we need it, it's not a viable alternative. They are investing heavily in that research. This creates an awful lot of very highly paid jobs in that research department. And that is the direction the Alberta Advantage Party would go, would to make sure that we have a vial of industry 100% to go forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So next question, let's start with Chris. Okay, third question, dealing with this is very rural and First Nations. What is your party's position on the development of more renewable energy in rural and indigenous communities across the province? Well, uh, one of the key ways that we can do this is with community energy. And uh, the community uh, energy program that I was talking about could include uh, winds, solar, renewable energy, uh, like geothermal energy. Um, and the 
point that in if you had a virtual meter, uh, people from the cities could invest in uh, solar farms, uh, geothermal plants, and, and so on. And then that in investment would actually offset their consumption. And so depending upon how much they invested, uh, th that would spur a lot of cooperation between uh, cities and rural areas and would have a lot of development all over the province and it would bring resources back. And if we can get, if we get paid for the energy that they're producing, that would bring resources to those communities and would spur a rapid development of, of uh, rural, rural solar and, uh, and, and, develop, and jobs in local communities. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm so proud of the fact that we've made it clear that Indigenous communities must be a part of our plans for renewable energy. And in fact, we've said that 25% of new capacity being brought on must brought, being brought on street must have Indigenous equity. And many of you have probably seen uh, the article just the other day it's from CBC where the Muscogee's First Nations are, are talking about their concerns about what could happen under a UCP government. They talk about the fact that renewable energy is, uh, is such an important, is so intimately connected to, to their lifestyle. It's an extension of living in harmony with the environment. And they, they talk about a few examples there. The Muscogee's Mall, for instance, has a solar power system uh, that's designed to reduce uh, emissions and save a whole lot of money. And they've done, the, they've done so nearly $8,000 a year in utility costs. Louis Bull Tribe, there's another example there where um, their, uh, I think it's 188 kilowatt system enables nearly $20,000 in savings. So there are so many examples out there that show that Indigenous communities have benefited from our from our programs. And uh, I, I worry uh, what, what will happen under a different government. So again, another reason why we need to keep, keep pushing for solar energy and keep uh, pushing to re-elect this government. The first thing that needs to be done in terms of energy independence for Indigenous people is to talk to them about what they want. The failure of every government in every province and every federal government in Canadian history is discussion with Indigenous people, treating them as equal partners. We need to consult every time we build a pipeline. We shouldn't be building any pipelines, but if we're going to be building a pipeline, we should have that conversation with the Indigenous people. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is to put a lot of money into uh, building jobs in rural areas and in uh, Indigenous First Nations areas. Uh, when they ask for funding for a project, we need to be putting that money there. Thank you. We're up next. So what are Party Liberals going to do first? We're going to give our Indigenous people representation that they were missing for years. We're going to add six seats to the legislature, four of them to the First Nations and two of them to the Menti, in order to uh, have more representation and have more voice regarding those issues. The second thing that we're going to do, we're going to uh, amend our Municipalities Act, giving all the power uh, to municipalities and recognizing them as the separate powers of the government so they would be able to make their own decisions what is best for them. We're also going to expand the rural programs with the internet and uh, under electric grid to make sure that our rural communities have access to most of the uh, most of the the internet in order to uh, update the networks. We're also going to support all the programs under uh, climate leadership change that have already been in place from the carbon tax. The only difference is going to be is the difference in how we're going to be collecting that carbon tax and transparency as well, which was a big issue. David, it's now you. Issues of energy and renewable energy and energy and energy. Myself, I'm married to an indigenous lady. My children are 18. So are my grandchildren. So when we start talking about what can be done for the indigenous or the major settlements, it's something that's pretty dear to my heart. For a lot of these settlements, solar power, wind power will work because quite literally there is no other alternative. So for those places, even if it is marginally more expensive to put in without the government subsidies, I'd fully support it so the AAP. On the other hand, we have indigenous communities that have gas balls that are sitting right there that could easily be utilized with generators that are brought in, set up right on their reserves, right on their communities, and that can more and supply more efficiently and cheaper electricity and can wind or solar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, 
I would like to say, but I think uh, this is in a different perspective. Uh, clean energy and renewables are the need of today and tomorrow as well. And Janice, I was listening to you uh, uh, and in the debate as well. Uh, I have this uh, uh, questions and answers. So I'll give them a uh, little side. I'll, I'll give them a uh, uh, little bit uh, away from me. Uh, I take it in a different perspective. This province uh, has so much renewable resources that, that can be utilized. And unfortunately, I don't see in the last uh, the NDP government they did uh, enough to utilize those uh, renewable resources in the province. For example, the biomass. And we have so much biomass in the province that could be converted into biofuels and the clean energy. And my party uh, uh, stands very much supporting for, uh, for the for the cause so for the engagement of, of the stakeholders, of the indigenous and the rural communities uh, to stand to stand up the collaboration from those uh, 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 those communities and individuals. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start with Janice. Okay, it's new with the case with the property assessed clean energy. Um, same question for all of you. One minute each. Sorry, Ms. Janice. Your party's position on the PACE program and we can support the staff. Thank you, Graham. And I, I just want to quickly talk about municipal programs in, in general. I mean, we work so hard on energy efficiency programs uh, that have uptake in, in almost every community across Alberta. And I like to use the example of my hometown of Barhead, which is not exactly a, a progressive uh, bastion. They now have solar panels on their new aquatic center, nearly $100,000 worth of solar panels. So we've seen the advances uh, due to these municipal programs. And far I can have solar panels, gosh darn it, everywhere I can. And so uh, it, as far as PACE goes, um, you know, we've made significant strides. We know right now that Edmonton is moving forward with the use of PACE as a pilot project. There's still more to be done for sure. And, and no matter what, our government is absolutely committed to uh, working through these models, getting them right within the municipal legislation framework uh, that we have here in Alberta. And we'll continue to support that. In terms of renewable energy on the municipal level, uh, the first thing that we can do is uh, have the municipal government implement. Uh, implement uh, investments in building renewable energy. We need to be putting money in into building infrastructure and renewable energy instead of wasting it on building arenas. Uh, by building more renewable energy um, in Edmonton, we can uh, create more jobs in the city. Uh, we have a lot of money in the city budget that's being used for things like uh, building arenas, and it's not very useful. Thank you. We need to ensure that programs like FASI have a broader support because currently there is only certain things that can be done. Like what we're trying to do also to uh, add into the legislature and like flood protection and mitigation programs, asbestos and rural pro programs, and uh, radon gas emissions. Uh, measurements as well, because those are very important for our municipalities and other communities to be able to access easier. Uh, with the Municipalities Act, as I say, we already amended it, so every municipality would have the voice in order to decide what is better for them. They also would have a right for veto in order for any project to move uh, forward. So now we're going to be decided on the local levels in order with, uh, what they would be uh, to proceed with, what is the best for that local community. Uh, I know that already that the we reached some progress with the renewable energy, but there is a lot to, to go. So we need the transparency in order to know how much of the carbon tax is going for those programs as well to reach the full capacity by 2030, because now it's about 10% of that. Thank you. Yeah. As far as uh, putting solar panels and stuff on schools, swimming pools, all of these type of infrastructure projects, the AP is 100% in favor of it. That helps to reduce the electrical energy bill for those facilities, which in the long run helps the taxpayers of the area. But if we're going to use taxpayers' money to fund it in the first place, that turns around and negates the benefit. To say that we're having a huge benefit because we're putting a bunch of solar panels on a building and we're saving a bunch of money when it's actually taxpayers' money that's being used in the first place, that's not the true saving. That is taking the numbers and skewering them. But if they, they want to put them on themselves and then save money on their power bills, that is a fantastic idea. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, David. Uh, as far as municipal and uh, legislature and municipal programs go, uh, I think, uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure uh, like I started following the politics uh, a little lately, uh, Alberta Party and always has spoken in favor of Bill 10, and it's, it's here, so can definitely confirm that. And we, uh, the party, have been proposed uh, an amendment to make it attractive to solar uh, capacity that was installed prior to Bill 10 uh, uh, passes. And uh, we don't uh, punish the, uh, the innovative home and business owners uh, who didn't need to uh, the, the incentive to install solar, uh, but to make them more proactive and more more engaging, uh, so that uh, all the uh, these uh, beneficial programs can be to, uh, to the communities and then uh, get the benefit. Yes, uh, we are very much in support uh, of making the the legislation. Uh, and the programs more effective and more, more efficient. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Yeah, so in terms of the case, um, it, it was a Green Party that uh, informed government. Uh, they would have implemented a, a case uh, financing program right away. Um, because if you look at the map of solar installed, particularly in Edmonton, it's usually the upper income uh, areas that have got solar installed, and all the lower income areas basically were not able to participate in the program. So if there's a base program and a robust base program that can be implemented in every municipality, that makes it so that way it's renewable energy and energy efficiency for all the people. And, and that's really what we need. And anything less is kind of like a feel good uh, measure that doesn't actually truly address climate change. Um, and, and so in terms of that, in terms of the other way that we can encourage businesses to be we can bring in quotas, and essentially uh, those are targets that they would be uh, moving targets that we to improve over time, and so then that would encourage businesses to avoid uh, you know, being taxed or fined in regards to uh, not having that energy efficiency. So, in order to avoid that, there is. Okay, I was starting. This question is double barrels question topics in the news these days. What is your party's position on the federal and provincial carbon taxes? And if you do not support the program that's currently in place provincially, what do you propose in its place? There's two parts of that question. Go ahead. We do generally support the idea of a carbon tax. The polluters should be the ones who pay. Uh, the problem with the carbon tax is that it affects your average working class person as well. It's not the average working class Albertan who is responsible for climate pollution. It is the large oil companies. Uh, just as we need to have uh, a sliding income tax scale for uh, federal income tax, we need to have a sliding tax scale for carbon tax. Uh, it's important to realize <laughs> that a lot of people uh, who are working class, who are working minimum wage jobs, just can't afford to be paying the carbon tax. Uh, so in general, yeah, we do support the carbon tax, but we need to put it on the people who are actually doing the work. We're all supporting carbon tax, but not in the way we see it now. We're not supporting the way uh, the transpar like with the transparency issues. We'll make sure that we are accountable to our and we produce a report of how exactly we reduce the carbon emissions within the like within while we're working on it. Also, what we're planning to do, because I agree with my colleagues that carbon tax has been hard on our middle class and low income families, while well, they're not most who are responsible for it. So we're going to make carbon tax revenue neutral for every single family in Alberta. We're also going to enhance rebates for the low income families, and we're going to restructure the way our taxes are collected now. It would allow us to generally lower the tax, that for the families with the low income and middle class families, they're going to practically pay the same amount as currently the on the income tax by introducing HST, which is the most progressive uh, current, uh, per, uh, per, uh, current economic uh, program in order to deal with the situation. We're just shifting taxes, and the general tax is going to be lower, including the car. <laughs> the Alberta Advantage Party does not support the carbon tax. It is one of the most heinous taxes that has ever been bestowed upon anybody. It is a tax on top of a tax on top of a tax. Myself, I qualify for the full rebate on the tax. It doesn't even come close to paying a third of what I pay in carbon tax every year. 
I live in rural Alberta. It just barely covers the additional cost of my heating bill. It has nothing to do with the extra cost of my groceries. It does absolutely nothing for it. It's the cost of any meals I go to have out. In fact, I don't have that many. It does nothing to cover the cost that it costs me when I have to drive and travel. It is in my area, rural Alberta, it is an absolute detriment. Thank you. Thank you. And what I see, uh, this is uh, probably carbon taxes, the most controls that uh, people that, what I see from over the panel, everyone agreeing, uh, supporting the green energy, solar energy and everything, but there is a little bit disagreement on the carbon tax. And I feel that, and, and my stand is also there, we live in this province, it's very cold, especially for people like me, coming from uh, other countries, or countries. We cannot uh, live uh, without heating our homes. We need to heat our homes, we need the heat energy, and when we heat, uh, we heat, we have it uh, covered, definitely. And my party, Alberta party, is, is committed uh, reducing the products of carbon emissions, no doubt on that. Uh, but the, but uh, we don't want to punish families uh, for the carbon tax. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so the, the Green Party uh, supports a carbon tax, so when that is also revenue uh, neutral, and, then, and of course where none of the funds would go into uh, general revenue, but also one that focuses uh, mainly on the uh, heavy metal emitters, uh, because over 60% of the uh, greenhouse gases produced are produced by large-scale industry, and, and so uh, yes, everyone has to do their part, everyone has to look at should be proportional to those uh, that are doing the, the emissions and that can easily uh, fund the program and not be too much of a burden uh, for, uh, for the average Albertans. Thank you. Janice, do you support the current Look, we, as I talked about earlier, climate change is real and threatens our forests, our communities, our economy, and the health of our kids. And, and for too long, previous, go previous governments didn't take action. And Rachel Notley took, took action to fix that and got down to it with, uh, in, in working with that industry, working with experts to create a Made in Alberta plan. And you know, we phased out coal fired uh, electricity generation. We're working on that through a just transition for workers in the communities affected. And you know, by pricing carbon, uh, solar is now able to compete on a level playing. Field. We know that the money from the carbon levy stays here in Alberta. It's reinvested in our pro in our province through uh, programs like uh, the uh, the other key Calgary's Green Line expansion. We move forward. We got more done in the area of renewables in, in four years than the other guys did in 44 years. But Kenny will take us back. He's made that clear. Don't you wish the UCP were here to answer this question today? So let's keep moving forward. And uh, I'm uh, I'm proud to be on Rachel Notley's team and to be fighting for renewable and solar in particular. What is your party's position on supporting the creation of more electric car vehicle infrastructure across the province <coughs> and then balance the cities? Well, we know that the amount of uh, energy is, uh, uh, electric vehicles is actually growing in the province, even though now it's not that significant, it's around 6,000 of them, but it's growing every day. So we need to make sure we build infrastructure, and our priority is to build infrastructure starting south, because from the United States we have a large amount of uh, cars driving here, so we need to make sure there's a charging station placed on all of those roads, and we make sure we support those projects. Another uh, important point that we're looking to is that about 27% of uh, freight trucks, large trucks, uh, driving across the Canada actually registered to Alberta. So that's our trucks. So we need to make sure that those trucks are more efficient and we can find the ways how to uh, move them into uh, more electrical or more alternative energy uh, sectors and how do we uh, make sure that they are functioning and re reducing the emissions in the air. So that would be the second priority. And well, we build infrastructure, of course, is the first to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to charge their cars. Thank you, David. The Alberta Advantage Party does support electric cars. 
We have many cities around the world, but the small and the pollution problem within the cities are horrendous. One of the largest contributors to that are the vehicles that are driven every day up and down the roads. We do recognize, though, at the same time, that we are displacing pollution by having electric cars in the communities, in the cities. We are getting rid of the pollution out of the cities, but we're creating pollution at the same time in the manufacturing processes of lithium batteries, and we're also trying to get rid of the lithium batteries when they run their life on. But if we've got a choice of having millions of people trying to choke to death, or being able to disperse it over a wider train plane, we much in favor of dispersing that pollution over a wider plane than we have the pollution concentrated in a small area, which is going to help kill more tens of thousands of people. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, David. Uh, and my party also is strong to support electric and green fleet vehicles for uh, government as well as industry. We are the, the, the big supporter of clean energy, no doubt, like I, I said in the beginning you saw. And my party would work with Transport Canada uh, to formulate the regulations uh, that, uh, that uh, support uh, the electric vehicles uh, for through their use and, and, uh, in, in the public as well. And the uh, industry is already installing electric vehicle uh, facilities. Uh, and we, we fully support uh, for that as well, and we will continue to support electric buses as well in the municipalities. And uh, uh, and we will, you know, like I said, in the beginning, so uh, my party uh, is very uh, dedicated and committed to supporting the basic and fundamental research uh, to enhance uh, the, uh, the clean energy and the, and the electric power as well. That will go uh, the fuel cells and the uh, next generation batteries uh, development as well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so the Green Party uh, will basically uh, copy the uh, uh, BC uh, government's support for uh, electric vehicles, the rebates for electric vehicles, and so that it's about five thousand dollars for a full-fledged uh, electric vehicle, and then it changes for uh, its hybrid or, or other forms of uh, efficient vehicles, um, and then of course uh, all of our, our buses and our transit should all be. Uh, electrified and it's coming. Um, we also need to invest in the infrastructure to allow that to happen. I have my myself installing uh, electric vehicle charge stations realize that our energy infrastructure is not going up to the demand that electric vehicles are going to cause and so that's why we need more solar and we also need more solar and we need uh, charge stations and an infrastructure that can handle it. So we need to invest in all of those things. Thank you, James. Yeah, our NDP government has recognized that electric electrification is part of our future, and that's why we've uh, ensured that our electricity, or working to ensure that our electricity is as clean as possible. We've made some targeted investments in southern Alberta uh, with electrical vehicle, vehicle uh, charging infrastructure, but as Chris said, there is still more to be done, and we knew that, uh, we'd heard from, uh, from some of our partners in southern Alberta that a lack of uh, charging stations had been a barrier to tourism. So moving forward, we're going to continue to work with uh, with local communities, municipalities that want to see more uh, electric charging infrastructure and to help make this happen. Ultimately, the answer to clean and efficient transportation is not actually uh, electric cars, but investment in public transportation. There are cities in the world where needing a car uh, is not an issue. Most people in those cities, like in New York uh, and parts of Luxembourg, uh, do not need to have a car. We can save on emissions by having uh, fewer cars on the road. Uh, in terms of electric cars, though, uh, for the short term because it's not immediately possible to completely eradicate cars and build public transportation. Uh, we do support electric cars um, to as a, as a medium solution uh, in the meantime. Uh, we want to build subsidies for owners of electric cars. Uh, we would also like to build a public corporation that would compete with uh, other uh, competitors, uh, a public corporation that would produce Canadian electric cars. Thank you. Okay, the last question. Two minutes left. You're going to get two minutes to answer this one. Okay, it's a luxury, I know. Starting to think there's a lot in this question, so you get two minutes to answer. Okay, what are the top initiatives or policies your party is proposing so that Alberta can help address the effects of catastrophic climate change and help Canada meet its responsibilities under the Paris Agreement targets that Canada endorsed. 
two years, three years ago. So you can probably see basically that climate change. It took me to the day. As far as climate change is concerned, I listened with great interest here a few days ago when the federal government announced that Canada was warming up faster than any other country on the face of the planet. I had a little bit of a problem with that statement, seeing as they were talking about our Arctic ice packs melting at a faster rate than anywhere else, our sea levels going up more than anybody else's. But yet at the same time, there's reports from all of Russia that have said their ice packs are increasing, their temperatures are going down, and the water levels are going down. So I'm very curious as to how we in Canada can be on the opposite end of the scale. Is the world sensitive a bit, so things are flowing in our direction? What's going on there? I think what's going on a lot with the climate change, and I do not deny climate change, climate has been changing as long as there's been a planet. It's very clear in all of the fossil evidence that you can find archaeological, it's everywhere. You cannot deny that there is climate change. But climate change to the point of what you're talking about, there's a UN report that was released in 1989. In 1989 it said that if by 1999 we did not do something to stop global warming, that all of our cities that were close to the coast would be under many multiple feet of water. That this was an emergency had to be done right now. They said the mole lines would in the country would be about 20 feet underwater. That's how much our oceans were going to rise. As we all know, this is not happening, not occurring. I think what we're looking at here an awful lot on the climate change is many people who wish to drive an agenda are using it as an ability to make an awful lot of money. Government wants tax, and they want more and more tax all the time. If you've got an extreme crisis, that is grounds for more taxes. So personally, I do not think that the party does not think that man is the overriding driver of climate change. As such, the Paris Climate Accords are simply a way to transfer wealth from one end of the world to the other. It's not going to have any real effect. Okay. Thank you, David. Climate change and environment is very close to me, and my body as well. And human-made climate change is real. Um, I don't know if some, uh, the folks in other parties may think that, uh, the otherwise that uh, name is completed. And uh, yeah, uh, we need to invest in new technologies, in my opinion, uh, to address those issues. The development has to be responsible, it has to be sustainable, and my party stands for that, investing money for the technological development, research and innovations in, in that field, so that our landscape uh, can be protected, uh, the, uh, the, the life quality of the rural, of rural Alberta and the new indigenous world could be, could be improved. And it's not uh, so that our uh, the overall landscape is not disturbed. Yes, my party, Alberta party, uh, strongly stand uh, for the climate change and environment protection. We will work to, uh, to make regulations and, and, uh, and whatever need to be done uh, uh, to improve the technology and advancement so that our development is sustainable and it's not responsible creating uh, contributing to the climate change. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. <laughs> well, the uh, first thing I want to say is, is that uh, most scientists are very conservative in what they want to report. And so, and so that way uh, they do not come off as being alarmist. But every, there's every indication that climate change is accelerating faster and faster uh, and beyond what even the IPCC has reported. If we do not take this challenge uh, seriously, uh, then, then we jeopardize future generations and their prosperity. In other words, we're living off of the credit of future generations. This is not acceptable. We have to take bold action and we have to address this. We have to look at this as if an uh, asteroid was coming to, to hit the Earth and that, we, uh, that, that it's jeopardizing uh, the, our very way of life. Uh, so we, so it's, it's not something. Not, not only should we be looking to meet the Paris Accord, which falls very short of what we actually need to do, we should be looking to exceed that. And by doing that, we can get everyone back to work. There, there should be not a single person who isn't engaged in this economy and part of solve, in solving this, this problem. And at that point, we can transform the way our economy works. We can make it more equitable. Instead of going to billionaires, we can be in our pockets and be creating jobs. Because right now, our subsidies for fossil fuels 
are going into uh, billionaires' pockets and creating very few jobs. So why don't we why don't we spend our money to actually create jobs and uh, save ourselves and, and provide uh, a decent lot uh, of life uh, for our future generations? You know, I, I've said it a few times and I'll continue to echo it. I'm so proud of the, of, of the progress we've made under the leadership of, of Premier Notley. And with our climate leadership plan, in addition to carbon pricing, which is then, incidentally, uh, you know, most conservative economists agree upon, uh, in addition to that, we, we move forward with the coal phase out, as I said, working towards a just transition for workers and their communities. Um, Energy Efficiency Alberta, the creation of an incredible program, a multi set of programs. Without this, if this program, if the energy efficiency Alberta is killed, we will be one of the only jurisdictions in North, North America without an energy efficiency program. And that's just shameful in my opinion. The cap on oil sands emissions, the growth in solar that I mentioned at the beginning, 800%, I can't say that enough, 800% growth in solar since 2015. So as long as we're continuing to use oil, we are going to focus on reducing emissions while getting the best value for our oil. We know that we can't transform overnight, but unlike our uh, absent uh, competitors here at the UCP, we will continue to keep diversifying our economy, keep reducing emissions, and moving forward to together tackle climate change. Thank you. Just a warning, if you got a cell phone, I'll make sure it's turned on. We've got some feedback in the so thank you. The first thing that I want to say is that climate change is real, and it is coming. 97% of scientists worldwide agree that it is a problem. Again, we have like a decade to deal with this problem. Uh, my colleague Chris is very right when he says that an asteroid is coming to order, not literally, but that is how we have to treat it. Uh, in terms of what we can do, uh, the party does have uh, a, let's say, four-step program. Uh, first of all, we need to nationalize all energy. We need to get the capitalists out of, this, out of the game. Uh, the people who are running the energy sector right now are greedy and they are not going to put the workers and the youth first. They're not going to worry about the consequences of their actions. Only a government run by the people is going to do that. So nationalize all energy, get the people who don't care about what happens to the earth out of the game first. Second is stop expanding oil sands, stop expanding pipelines. Uh, you know, I, I do like Rachel Motley, I think that she's done a good job, but the absolute worst thing that she has done is her environmental policy. Uh, you know, Pipelines uh, are one of the biggest contributors to uh, climate change uh, in Alberta. Uh, oil spills have been happening all over the place and it's damaging ecosystems. Uh, it is a disaster that we are continuing to move in that direction. Uh, so stop expanding oil and gas, for sure. Uh, number three, invest massively in solar, wind, and geothermal. Uh, research other alternatives as well, hydroelectric, uh, maybe even nuclear. Um, put as much money as we can into that. Uh, create jobs uh, through that. Uh, replace the jobs that are going to be lost in the oil sector as we phase that out with jobs from the renewable energy sector. Uh, number four is research into alternative agriculture. Um, I'll, I'll just stop. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Did you get the first word? Well, for my generation, it was never actually a question of whether climate change exists or it doesn't exist. We were born into it. This year, me and my son were in Iceland, and the one thing that I learned that his generation is actually the last generation that are going to see glacial roots still existing. Like, what does it tell us? It tells us that we can't wait anymore. We can't just sit and wait till the lobby is talking to each other and they will be able to do something. Alberta Energy Regulator estimated $260 billion of long-term reclamation costs by oil and gas industry right now. And the DP government was able to collect only 0.6% of those information costs. So now we need a bolder plan. Alberta liberals are proposing to have a bond, a bond oil for oil patches to make sure that polluters pay because we need to collect this money. We also are proposing to have a time limit on, uh, well, on whales to make sure that uh, those un uh, unreclaimed whales are not going to be standing there for centuries until somebody actually going to reclaim them. So now it's going to be the uh, time imposed for them. What else we plan? planning? We're planning to actually ban whatsoever clear cutting of our forest because we can't just stand and look at it anymore. It's not renewable, it's not going to just change over time. We're also going to protect the water supply and eastern slopes for the 
uh, of uh, Eastern Slopes of the Rocky Mountains. We're going to work with the non-profit organizations to make sure we protect our parks and estimate the park zones and protect our biodiversity, which is now actually in the greatest danger. So our plan is the plan that's actually going to change those things the once and for all. We're not going to be sitting and waiting anymore till somebody's going to be moving. We're going to be doing it now. And this reclamation costs are going to be helping us to address other issues when we collect this money. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. David, Brown, Chris, James, Andrew. And I give up my chair for the using Thank you to all of you for coming here and giving your, your opinions and your platforms. And thank you to you for showing up as an audience and a member of Vote on the 16th of April. Thank you very much.